I greet you all. My name is David D. Pungani. I'm a pastor at IM Church, and this is The Restoring Word. For the past few days, I've been looking at my life, looking at how I'm growing, and thinking back when I was young, how excited I used to be. Every time when there's, uh, it's going to be a new year, a new season, I was always excited and looking forward uh, to the next level of life. And I've been asking myself, am I still excited about life? Especially about my Christian walk. Am I still excited? Do I still have the joy of salvation? And the Lord showed me something that I want to also share with you, which is growth. You know, every Christian is supposed to grow. When you were young, you started school at grade one, grade R. Then you went to grade one, grade two, grade three. And then they told you you're going to go to big school. You know, and then you you are told you are finishing grade 12, you're going to university. Then from university, you know that you are going to a workspace. But most of us at our workspace, we've kind of, we've pressed a pause button. We are not moving. We are not getting promotion. We are no longer studying. We are no longer progressing in our careers. Then the life begins to, you know, uh, get a bit stiff and boring. Um, uh, you know, it, it, we're supposed to grow to another level. Another level, it is to own your business. Another level is to have a side business, a weekend business. A human being is supposed to grow. Grow in your career. You're supposed to grow in a relationship. You're supposed to grow in your spiritual life. If you are, you've been single for a while, there's no change. You begin to have wrong doctrine about relationships. If you've been uh, 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 in a failing relationship or after failing relationship, you end up believing that, well, there's no relationship for you or you are not meant to actually be happy in a relationship, which is not true. So all of us were supposed to grow. So the Lord began to show me these things, that even at church, if I've, I've been in Asha for past five years or 10 years, or I'm just singing and I'm just waiting for the next rehearsal, sooner or later, I will be, you know, I, I've, I, have pe- I have pressed a pause button and I'm bored. Now that I'm bored, I actually make, cause other people to also not enjoy life because I've got this non-excitement attitude. So the Lord showed me that people, he said, my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. So knowledge is the one that helps us to grow. Knowledge is the one that makes us to produce fruits. So that's what I want to talk about quickly, summarize it. Fruits. I want to talk about fruits. Okay. John 15 verse 16. That's our key verse. John 15 verse Uh, John 15 verse 16 it says you have not chosen me but I have chosen you and ordained you wow the Lord says I have I've chosen when did he choose you from the beginning of the foundations of the world the Lord chose you and on top of it he has ordained you he has made you a prophet, a preacher, an evangelist. He has given you a gift of help, a gift of mercy. He has given you spiritual gift. He has attained you. You see, what pastors do is, is called uh, facilitating ordination or affirming ordination. But the one who ordains you is the one who has chosen you. The Lord does not care how your eyes look like, what language you speak, which country or which province are you from, well, you know, are your parents still together or not? You were raised by a single parent or by a grandma. The Lord does not look at that. He just chooses you based on how he sees. You know, uh, uh, God tells Samuel, human beings look at the outside. But God looks at the heart. I don't know your heart, but God knows your heart. And the wonderful thing that he doesn't need anybody's approval to anoint you, to ordain you. I'm here to tell you, you are anointed. You are anointed. You are anointed. You are anointed. To do what? Let's read now. Continue verse 15, verse 16. Why are you anointed? Why? Let's read. That you should go and bring forth fruit. Wow. Every believer is ordained to go. Which means move to another level grade one to grade two year number one a university year number two it's it's unusual it's abnormal to keep failing and repeating because you are supposed to be going 
When you're a Christian and you're, you're a church member, go into a ministry. Go into an evangelism. Be excited about this 2024, about new people that you're going to bring to church, new people that will be baptized in the water and in the spirit through you, through your testimony. Be excited about going. The Bible says, go. I've anointed you to go. All right? Dear preacher, dear intercessor, I have anointed you to go. Dear student, go where you're going. Go to another level. Go to another grace, another grade at school. Go to work. From work, go to your business. From your business, look forward to retirement. Leave an inheritance for your children's children. You are anointed to progress. You are anointed to grow. You are anointed to go. Why? Because you must bring fruit. Every time when you move to another level, you bring fruit. Amen. Let's look at John 15, 16. Let's finish up. What does it say? And that your fruit should remain. And whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he shall give you. Okay. So we ask our Father who is the one who has created us. And we ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us. Okay. So when you ask, God give. But why would God give you something that you are not going to use? Why would you want money if you are not a giver? Why would you want marriage if you don't love people? You don't, you can't, you, you are just a person who's self-centered. You can't love anybody else. Why would you want a house if you can't host anyone? You can't take care of your cousins, your aunt. You can't even keep anyone. You don't like people. Why would God bless you with money if you can't tithe and you can't give to the poor? Why would God give you an anointing to heal the sick? If you have never prayed for anyone in the past six months, why would God anoint you with prophetic gift if you can't prophesy to anyone? You are anointed to go. You are anointed to bring fruit. Okay, so I want to close. There are three important fruits. You must never forget this. In life, there are three important fruits. Fruit number one is called fruit of Christ. Number two, fruit of the Spirit. Number three, fruit of men or fruit of a person. Now, fruit of Christ is bringing souls. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only beloved Son, so that whoever believed in Him, now that's why. So when Jesus died, He died so that when people believe, fruits, they come. So, fruit of Christ are new souls. Never forget that. And how do you win new souls? You win them by sharing your testimony, what Jesus has done for you on social media, in person, wherever you go. Number two, you win people to Christ by inviting them to church. And when the pastor is preaching, the Holy Spirit convicts them and they are born again. You win people, hallelujah, by discipling them, which means join a believer's class, teach them, tell them about how to study the Bible, tell them about water baptism, Holy Ghost baptism, how to experience the baptism of fire, suffering with Christ and don't crack, don't leave church. That's called discipleship. Train somebody. Who have you been training? You've been born again for five years, ten years. How many disciples have you trained? Then the fruit of Christ is, is about training people and lastly in terms of the fruit it's becoming a teacher you must teach somebody teach a home cell start a prayer uh, team at, at work start a prayer team at school start a youth organization in your community start a home church in your house with your kids invite your neighbor be a teacher so that's a fruit number one fruit number two which is the fruit of the spirit we'll talk about this next time okay we all know the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is completed with nine parts. And I'll show you that. And then the fruit of a fruit of man or fruit of a person, I will show you its action and lifestyle. Okay? The fruit of a person. Normally we say children are the fruit of our loins. So which means there was an action, okay? You act, 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 and then babies come. You act, 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 and you get paid. You act, 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 and then uh, you get promotion or you, you get your past at school. So the fruit of a person is action or your lifestyle. We'll deal with that in the future. I want to close on this. Fruit are produced by seed. 
pro fruits are produced by seed. Matthew 7, 16, it says, you shall know them by their fruits. Okay, so human beings are known by their actions. How do we know that you are a Christian by your action? Your salvation is the fruit of somebody who preached to you. Your spiritual growth is a fruit of someone who is currently feeding you. You see, the enemy can't stop people from being saved. But he's fighting everyone from growing. Because when you grow, you will win others. When you grow, you become the light of the world. When you grow, you, grow, you become the salt in this earth. When you grow, you become a disciple. You become an influencer. And Satan cannot have... Imagine an anointed, beautiful, handsome person like you being anointed and being used by God. The devil is in trouble. So the devil doesn't want you to grow. So he wants you to move from one church to another. You know, people live in church. God was not intended for people to move from one church to another. Unless you are relocating for work or school. But God has planted you in the church. If there are things you are not happy about in that church, pray, engage the leaders, the pastors, try to solve the problems. Never leave. There is no greener pastures in the, in, in, in the church set up. What you are living here in this local church, you will find in the other church. So the enemy just want to dislocate you, uproot you from the ground as a plant, uproot you from where you are growing nicely and put you in a foreign ground where you will not grow. So be careful. Your ministry is a fruit of Christ. Okay? Your ministry. So somebody asked me, what is ministry? Ministry is a service you offer to demonstrate God's love. It's a service to demo, that demonstrate God's love, which means it's something you do without being paid just to show God's love or God's power. That is called ministry. So long as you're gathering people to help them, it's ministry. Sometimes ministry, you don't have to be a preacher. Ministry, you can show people how to start small businesses, how to do gardens, how to do small, uh, 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 start uh, um whatever entrepreneurship it can that is your ministry as long as you are not earning money and then christ is glorified christ is a center christ is the reason you're doing that and you share with people that i'm doing this i'm not charging you because christ has sent me that is ministry and because people are going to say i want this christ too how can i get this christ so ministry is the service you offer to demonstrate god's love I want us to pray. Believers must produce fruits. The Lord is looking for fruits from you. So we know there are three fruits, right? We said there's a fruit of Christ, which is souls. Fruit of the Spirit, we'll talk about it next time. The fruit of a man, we'll also talk about it next time. God is looking for souls. Jesus bled and died so that you produce souls. My last verse is Mark eleven thirteen. Mark eleven thirteen. And seeing a fig tree afar, this is Jesus now, having leaves, Jesus, he came happily that he might find something in it. And when he came to it, he found that there was nothing for the time of the fig, of the fig tree was not yet. So it means it was not a, 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 a season to produce and Jesus answered and said to it Jesus spoke to the tree no man eat tree no man eat fruit of this tree thereafter forever okay and then when we jump to verse 20 and a disciple heard it and in the morning as they passed there they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots okay so now what is this verse saying Jesus is looking at you as a tree. You look anointed. You look beautiful. You've got leaves on. You are big. You are tall. You've been born again for 10 years, 5 years, 2 years. And Jesus is coming closer to you to see if there's any fruit of Christ, which is souls. He's coming to see, has there anybody who has been born again through your testimony? Have you invited anyone to church this year, 2014? Have you even posted on social media that Jesus loves you? 
and Jesus comes and he finds that there's not even a single fruit. Remember the Bible says, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Guess what? The fruit, they are attached to a branch. Jesus is not looking for more branches. He's looking for fruit, fruit of Christ our souls. Fruit of Christ our souls. And then he cursed this tree. I want you to pray and say, Lord, may I never dry up my love to produce fruits of Christ, my love to win souls. May I never dry up. May I never be bored. May I never be stagnant. May I produce souls in 2024. I want you to pray that prayer. Say, Lord, teach me how to win souls. Can we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this word. Fruit, fruit, fruit. We have to produce the fruit of Christ, which is souls. Help me not to be dry up. Help me not to be bored. In Jesus' name, amen.